Hey everybody, Terry the Real Estate Guy here. Hope you're doing well today. Listen, we just started one of our first investment properties as an Airbnb. And quick story for you here. My wife uh, was downstairs, we had two properties. My wife is downstairs and she goes, hey, I don't think this one's gonna make any money. And I was like, really? And my wife's not really that involved in our real estate business too much, but she gets these what I call hunches. And, uh, and when she has a hunch, I tend to listen. Women have this weird intuition thing that men don't have, and it's just really important that you listen to it. So uh, she says, yeah, I, I think when we buy furniture and everything for this property, it's not gonna make any money. I said, well, can you give me three or four hours, and I'm gonna build a spreadsheet, and I'm gonna figure out whether you're right or whether you're wrong, because I have to look at the data, and uh, what I wanted to share with you was this calculator that I came up with. I'm gonna share it with the world. It's a uh, short-term versus long-term rental calculator. Let me show it to you, okay? I'm gonna open it up here. All right, so you can see it here. Uh, on the left-hand side, this whole section here is your short-term rental analysis. And then on the right-hand side is your long-term rental analysis. And there's some bonus stuff I'll get into in a little bit. You're gonna go into File, and you're gonna hit Make a Copy and then you're gonna make your own copy. So don't ask for access, because I'm not gonna give it to you. This is the master one that doesn't get messed with. So you just wanna go in there and you wanna make a copy. Okay, sound good? So everybody's gonna have access to see it, but you're not gonna have access to make a whole lot of changes to it. So you're gonna have to just do make a copy, and then you can have your own and do whatever. All right, let's talk through a few things here. So these are some of the dials that we're gonna play with. One of the things that um, short-term rentals don't really take factor in is people get all excited. I'm going to rent out my house as an Airbnb or whatever. You don't think about the furniture that you have to put in it, right? And so I've factored in the furniture. So let me talk about this for a second. Furniture is a depreciating asset. So if you put $10,000 of furniture into your Airbnb in three years or four years when it has to be replaced or some of it has to be replaced, how much is that furniture worth? Some of it's gonna be actually worth zero because it's gonna be trashed, and some of it's gonna be worth probably 20 to 30% if you're lucky of its original value. So over here in the calculator, I put it in the amortized cost of furnishings. So for example, if you furnish it for $11,000, I ran the amortization schedule at 75%. So basically after three years, 75% of that furniture's value is gonna be gone. It just vaporizes, right? Like a car. And then I put the monthly cost, let me kind of pull this down low so you can see it. The monthly cost of ownership, I, I, I depreciated it 75%. And then I put the monthly cost of owning that furniture over a 24 month period. So that's what all this is here. Up in here, this is your monthly fixed costs, your mortgage payment, you'll have to calculate that, your internet, whatever that would cost, um, water, and I just kind of factored in some percentages. I said 2% would be water, 4% would be electric, you gotta take care of the lawn, insurance and taxes on the property, your capex, what is capex? Well, a capex is what it's gonna take to keep that property in good condition over time. So every month, according to the calculator, right, every month we're putting in $152, 5% of the gross rents, $152 of capex. So when I have a repair, if it costs me $300, that's two months worth of capex. And then I put maintenance in here as a separate item as well. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had enough. So maintenance would be changing the air filters, doing that sort of thing. Now, some of you could say, well, that's also CapEx, and you're right. You're probably right, but maintenance could be other things. It could be fixing a, a bar stool or a chair, replacing a chair, right? Those are the kinds of things that could go wrong in an Airbnb. Now, check this out. I went over here and I said, well, what's it cost? You know what I mean? Every, every time you take a shower in an Airbnb, you pump some shampoo out, all of a sudden, like, that costs money. How much does it cost? And so I put some of those costs in here as well. Now, I don't know what they are. I just kind of kind of guessed, to be honest with you. If you use body wash once a day, it might be about eight cents. You can get kind of crazy with this if you want to, but it gave me just, it spit out just kind of a, an idea of it's gonna cost about $4.10 every time somebody rents the house um, in a material cost, okay? Now, let's go back to adjustable costs. Well, adjustable costs are based on how much you use the unit, right? So the Airbnb owner fees, um, I put in here 4%. 
I think it might be a little bit less than that, but again, I, I wanted to over-exaggerate and be conservative, right? If Airbnb raises their fees for some reason, I wanted to make sure I had a little bit of fluff built in there. Okay, so now let's play with the dials. You ready? This is where it gets fun. So I'm gonna go up here to like the occupancy rate, and I'm gonna say, all right, we're gonna, every month, we're gonna have 21 rentals. So that would be about 70% occupancy. And um, on this particular Airbnb, I think I can get, uh, let's just say I think I can get 120 a night for it, right? $120 a night. So then it's got automatically gonna calculate your, your nights rented per year, your gross profit per night, right? Gross profit per night. And then you've got daily expenses. Your daily expenses are basically your monthly fixed costs divided by um, in, into 365 units, right? All your costs divided by 365 units. So you can check the sum up here. It's your monthly fixed costs, your adjustable costs, and your materials costs <clears throat> divided by um, uh, your monthly costs divided by 30.4 days a month on average. And then um, you add F16, which is the material cost daily. Okay. Then what it does is going to spit out a monthly gross for you. So monthly gross uh, income and then monthly average expenses. So these are your average expenses there. Now, if you go over here, you can see now that I'm, I've got a profit and loss per night. So profit per night is $24.40. Profit and loss per month is $742. Things are looking good, right? I don't think I could have that much profit on a long-term rental with a regular tenant in it at $742 a month. So that looks good. Now almost eight, almost $9,000 a year in profit, right? Now there's an adjustment that I make and this is where everybody seems to get this wrong. You don't factor in the furniture. So this is where you have to factor in the loss that you're taking on the furniture. So let's look at that. Um, so PPM is uh, price per month, less the, or profit per month, I'm sorry, less the cost to furnish. So um, that is gonna be now $397.94 a month. My real number is, this is my net number every month. After all expenses are paid, I'm gonna make about $400 a month on that short-term rental, okay? Now, uh, profit per year is about $4,800. Once my furniture has been fully amortized, amortized over the 24 months, then that number obviously goes up by that by the amount of the furniture depreciation. Now, if you want to, like look at this here, if you want to, you can go in here and you can take the $344 a month um, and you could do this in over 36 months, right? If you wanna change it in the spreadsheet, just go over here and do 36 months and that's gonna change everything up top as well. The dials change, right? And now you can say, all right, I, I, I put my losses out over 36 months. I'm gonna change the label on this as well. And um, I'm profiting $512.52 a month, um, but I, I'm gonna have this $229 furniture pay, payment for three years. So I like getting rid of the furniture as quickly as possible. You certainly could do it in a year's time as well, and uh, it may show as a loss, okay? All right, now let's look at one other thing here. This is what makes it pretty cool. You can turn the dials is what I like to call it. So when you make a change to the occupancy rate now, you've got all these other fixed costs and adjustable costs built in. Let's say that I'm able to rent it for 75% of the month. Now you can watch the profit numbers change. It's really awesome. Or let's say that I can rent it for 75% of the night, but um, the, the, the rentals, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually, because here's the thing, if you get 100% occupancy, you're not charging enough for your rents, right? So 100% occupancy, I'm gonna raise that rent $10 and see what kind of impact it has. So um, let's say that I'm getting 100% occupancy at $120 a night, Right, so and I'm gonna now base it on 80% occupancy at 130 a night, all right? Now, look how the numbers change. They changed a lot over here. Um, now I'm profiting before furniture, 1218, 1219 a month. And then with furniture, I am profiting 875 a month. That's leveraged with a loan, principal and interest, conventional loan. And you can see that it makes a difference there. So a leveraged property, with a loan, getting about $876 a month. Okay, 
That's your Airbnb. So you can play around with that. Now, don't get too don't get too emotional with this, right? Everybody's kind of talking about Airbnbs right now. If you start swinging for the fences for your rents and your ARVs, I'm going to encourage you stay conservative. Always stay conservative. And you can use a, a some software like AirDNA. They will allow you to go in and just pay for one month in your market and just do kind of a month to month to get the, all the data that you need. And then once you get that data, you can shut shut down the month or whatever and not have to pay again. I use that all the time. All right. Now, let's look at the spreadsheet about long-term rentals. Let's check that out. Okay, in this case, um, I'm banking on 95% occupancy. So basically, if I have a two-year lease, it's only going to be, and it's going to take me one month to turn the lease around. I'm I'm having it rented 24 out of 25 months. That's about 95%. And this particular property would rent for $1,150 a month. So it gives you the nights rented per year, very similar to what it gives you in the sh oh, in the short-term rental. Let me just bring that over here, right? Nights rented per year, nights rented per year. Your nightly rent is $35.94, and your gross profit for rent over here is $104. That's a big difference, right? But check this out. Your daily expenses are much, much lower. And we'll talk about that in a second, why they're lower. Then it gives you a profit and loss per night um, based on your mortgage, um, your profit and loss per month, profit and loss per year, and your return on your initial investment. Okay, I'm gonna talk about what that means here in a second as well. Okay, so now let's do, let's look at how the fixed costs are. Now notice we don't have any of this other stuff that you have in a short-term rental. There's no internet, water, electric, all that stuff, unless you're gonna pay utilities or lawn service for your tenant, but you're gonna factor that into the rent, okay? But my mortgage stayed the same. It's still gonna be $791, and I'm gonna set aside CapEx of $115 a month. Now, why is this number lower than it is over here? Well, I actually have a CapEx of 10% of the monthly rents, which is a very common formula. And um, one of the main reasons it's lower is because we're not turning over the house as much. So in a short-term rental, you've got people beating their suitcases up against the wall. Um, they're just harder on the property sometimes than a long-term renter might be, a good long-term rental that takes care of your properties. All right, property management. Now you could factor in 10% of the month's rent for property management. Uh, we manage all of our own properties. That's why that's zeroed out. And then my initial investment. How much was my initial investment in the property? In this particular property, uh, my initial investment, after I refi everything out, I only have $5,000 of my own money in it. That's a completely separate video. But in my, at the end of the day, after I bought this property at a discount, got it renovated, and then refinanced it out uh, with the traditional financing, I only had $5,000 of my own money in that deal. Okay, now, so this there's no monthly adjustables, really, because you're not paying for anything that would be monthly adjustable. You basically have your principal interest, taxes, and insurance payment, and you're putting money away for CapEx, and you've already put in your initial investment. So check it out. If I go in here now, I can see that my profit and loss per month is $186.50, $186.50. My profit per year is $22.38 and my return on initial investment is 45%. 45% of my on this $5,000, am I happy with that or am I not happy with that? I could be happy with that. Now, if I don't want the headaches, I don't want the headaches of a tenant, if I don't want all the, uh, the issues of short-term rentals, people uh, breaking stuff and all um, the internet not working and people texting me in the middle of the night that th they ran out of towels or whatever, right? Uh, if I don't want those headaches, then I'm going to look at this sheet a little bit differently. But if I'm willing to be the hospitality manager and run a little mini hotel in Airbnb, look at the difference in profit margin here. Now, I'm going to go back, change my short-term rental to something a little bit more realistic. On this particular property, I think these numbers are more realistic. 70% occupancy, $120 a night rented, and it's going to give me after my furniture cost, $397.94. Basically, twice the return of my long-term rental. Is it worth it for an extra $200 and approximately $10 a month between my profit and loss as a long-term rental versus my profit and loss as a short-term rental? Is it worth the $210 a month to have all of the Airbnb stuff that goes along with it, right? I can't answer that for you. Is it worth it for me? Huh, it gets really close, right? I'm gonna say four or 
totally worth it to go the Airbnb route. But for an extra $210, I'm not sure it's worth it for me. Um, There's a lot of headaches for that $210. And then if you go and you hire an Airbnb company to do it for you, it's gonna cost you a little bit more money on top of that. Usually they take anywhere between 10 and 20% of the monthly rents. Now all of a sudden you're down to where it's just not making sense anymore to make an extra $100, $150 a month. I'd rather just keep the short-term tenant or or the long-term tenant in there with good credit. I know they're gonna pay every month and just call it a day, right? But this calculator is fantastic for you to run that math because if I run the math, right, and let's say I'm in this super hot area and I'm gonna make my Airbnb now, it's a great area. I know I'm gonna be at least 85% occupied. My rents are gonna be 135 a month. And now these numbers get pretty compelling. 1132 versus $186.50. You're basically almost 6Xing your profit um, to get a 600% more return on your investment um, from, a, from a monthly perspective. Ah, I might, I might opt for the better cash flow and pay somebody to handle my Airbnb or handle it internally. If you like this video, man, make sure you like it and give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, I I do real estate videos. I talk about real estate news, all kinds of stuff, but we're just getting ready to dive into our first Airbnb investment. I wanted to chat this with you. Now, remember that story at the very beginning? I ran that math on um, the Airbnb. It's not this one. It was the house right next door. Believe it or not, we were gonna lose $140 a month, every month. We're gonna lose $140. And so we decided to do a long-term rental on that one, a short-term rental on this one because it's a little cute little cottage in Greenville, South Carolina. So if you ever visit Greenville, South Carolina, once it's live, I'll link to the description below and y'all can stay there and I really appreciate it. All right, I'm Terry, the real estate guy. Spread the word. I hope you enjoy this video. We'll talk to you soon.